We discussed the development of the African slave trade. Slavery had been a long-standing institution in the Mediterranean classic and ancient worlds. On the European continent, it had been on the decrease because of feudalism, because they had peasants to provide labor. However, in the Sahara and the Iberian Peninsula, it was still a major part of trade. Slaves were often captured from rival tribes, from non-believers, or as a punishment for crimes, or as war trophies. Slavery of women was a large business for use as household servants or as concubines. Slavery rarely was a long-term situation or circumstance for anyone who found themselves in bondage, as you could buy your way out through tribute or service. Power of the aristocracy was measured on the number of slaves one held. Sometimes whole villages were put in tribute slavery. Because many slaves came from black African populations in the sub-Saharan regions, the Portuguese falsely assumed that slavery must be about skin color, and they began to bargain for slaves of a darker skin after realizing that more slaves could be acquired through trade with kings than raiding villages. The rulers of many of the coastal kingdoms were happy to fulfill the Portuguese demand in return for the goods that were being offered from Europe. Because African states had very little unity across the continent, it was easy for Europeans to exploit turning one on another to gather slaves as war trophies, and then sell them at the forts. Sadly, states that had long held out against slavery, like Benin, joined due to the attractive goods, services, and promises offered by the Portuguese, and eventually the Spanish, the Dutch, the English, and the French as well. When the Spanish and Portuguese began building sugar plantations on the Canary and Azor Islands in the 1500s, the demand for African slave labor only increased. Demand only grew when the plantation system spread into the Americas. Whereas before the African slave trade had been mostly based around women, the European Atlantic slave trade focused on men. Men were going to replace the dying Native Americans in the Western Hemisphere in the more difficult manual labor jobs. Which colonies like Jamaica took on more women as slaves in the households. The Dutch followed the Portuguese path when they took cities and forts like Elmina. The English followed the Dutch with the Royal African Trading Company. Then the French followed the English. Each nation established forts and trading towns on the coast on their way to circumnavigating Africa in order to get to the Indies. Not only did countless Africans die in the slave trade, but 10% of Europeans who went to work in the trading houses died of tropical diseases. Despite the death toll, slavery turned out to be very profitable for the Europeans, netting investors 300% per trip. More slaves were brought to the fort by slave hunters, where values were then set on everybody, based on body type, sex, and age. By the late 1500s and into the 1600s, Brazil had become a major center of slave labor, as the demand for sugar to sweeten coffee and tea increased around Europe. Brazil imported nearly 4 million Africans. This was followed by the British Caribbean at 2 million Africans and the Spanish colonies at 1 million Africans. Eventually, the southern U.S. would contain 4 million slaves based on the breeding of slaves rather than trade. And in most of the Caribbean island nations like Haiti, 90% of the population was made up of slave labor, far outnumbering the colonists.